Welcome back. Preserving music uh, of the ghettos and Holocaust uh, in China, Vietnam, Thailand, and other East Asian countries. Why is this music so relevant in the Far East? Joining us live is composer and pianist Dr. Amit Weiner. Hello, Hello and welcome Amit. to the Hi. show. Hi, how are you? It is very, very interesting. And, and you know, first of all, what, what got you involved in, you know, the music of, uh, of yesteryear? Is this something that's always just you know, spoken to on a deep level? Yeah, so I'm a musician, I'm a composer and a pianist myself, and I'm a third generation of a Holocaust survivor. My grandfather, he's Israel Weiner, uh, his entire family uh, were murdered in the Holocaust. Not a single member of his family wow. survived. And for many, many years, the Holocaust was a, a very important theme in our home. I have a bookshelf all dedicated to the Holocaust. So as a musician, I always wanted to uh, explore that subject of the music that was written during the Holocaust. Well, and even, I mean, the music, and you see in so many movies, like the music, in spite of, you know, the tragic situations, music kind of always you know, lifted people up even in dark times. Exactly. Like they were playing music exactly. in the ghettos and exactly. everywhere even All then, over. right? That's, a, that's actually the point of my uh, project. Uh, I called it uh, Music in Times of Tragedy. Mm -hmm. Initially, it was, um, uh, I established it with Yad Vashem six years ago in Jerusalem. So we had a few concerts in Jerusalem. And then it became international and they approached me from a few embassies, Israeli embassies um, around East Asia. And one of the uh, mottos that I always like to say in the beginning of the concert is how is it even possible that music was written? Exactly right. as you said. How is it even possible that music was written in such horrible times? And what have you found just through your journey? How was it possible? Do we so, have an answer? Yeah. So I have three actually, three answers. Okay. The first is um, a quote that I found on a poster from uh, the Jewish Symphony Orchestra in Warsaw Ghetto. And they wrote on that poster, Music is more important than bread, especially at times when it is not needed at all. Wow. So that means that for them, and that's very moving for me as a musician, you know, for them, music in that time was sometimes even more important than bread. Wow. That is, I mean, that is so deep and profound. And, yeah. and uh, yeah. anyway, I want to uh, play a clip of a performance. I think this one was in uh, Vietnam. Yeah. The one we're about to see. Exactly. All right, let's take a look. All right. So what is uh, what have you found is the reason that uh, you know that musicians in all these countries are so uh, curious about this music? So this was uh, from Vietnam, from Hanoi, Vietnam. It was a, an arrangement of a song by the Polish composer Mordechai Gebirtig, mm -hmm. the Jewish Polish composer who was uh, murdered in the Holocaust. And uh, that was uh, two years ago when I came to Hanoi, Vietnam. So I had a few rehearsals with the musicians before. And what I discovered is that in those countries in East Asia, they almost don't know anything at all about the Holocaust, nothing at all. So for the Israeli embassies that invite me to those countries, that's the most important thing. And you, you know? were saying even like people showed up, it was like a costume party and there were, there were people showing up dressed like Hitler? That was in Bangkok uh, before I arrived. And that was the reason that the concert was held in that specific university in Bangkok. That was a year ago. And it was a very big issue in Bangkok, uh, in the media in Bangkok uh, in those months. A student didn't know who was Hitler, actually. He thought he it, it was a comic uh, villain or something like that. And they were dressed up like Hitler because they just thought it's a Marvel comic. Or something wow, like that, that is yeah, really... A, for us, it's astonishing to discover. Well, yeah, but, you know, it's interesting that you were able to be there to kind of explain. So That's, I also want to yeah. say you brought this original book. So this was written by... Yeah, this is a... composer in, while in a concentration in, camp? In a concentration camp. This, uh, this is a piano sonata by Victor Ullmann. Mm -hmm. uh, Victor Ullmann, he has... Uh, he was a prisoner inside the uh, Theresienstadt concentration camp in Czechoslovakia. And he wrote a lot of pieces, actually. This is only one of them. And you can see on the score over there, 27 June 1943, Theresienstadt. This was wow. written inside uh, the dungeon of Theresienstadt concentration camp. So how do we know about how were they able to, I mean, so I understand the, maybe writing music, but do they play, were they, I mean, is there evidence that in, musical instruments were Yeah, so there were, kept? there are remarkable stories, specifically in Theresienstadt, because it was a specific 
a kind of concentration camp, there was a lot of cultural and musical activity. But there were hmm. other ghettos and camps that uh, Jews are, were not allowed to have any musical instruments at all. So for example, in a Vilna ghetto mm -hmm. in Lithuania, uh, they couldn't bring a piano and they smuggled inside the ghetto a piano, they dismantled it piece by piece. Instead, just think about it, instead of bringing food and water and medicine, they dismantled the piano and brought wow. it inside the ghetto and then put it together just to have a piano inside the ghetto. So How beautiful for you to you know, know that you're able to kind of continue this legacy. It's, uh, it's very profound. I mean, is this all, like, is, do you only focus on this kind of music in your, in your no, career, in your no, profession? No, I'm a composer. I teach at the Jerusalem Academy of Music. I travel a lot to the U.S. also as a composer of my own music. But this is one of the missions. This is your legacy. This is one of the this... missions that I have in every year that I'm traveling to East wow, Asia. It's really very amazing. Amazing work. Keep it up.